or another version of Shalabhasana. So be on your belly, stretched out long. Lengthen your rib cage forward, lengthen your legs back, and then stretch your arms forwards. And once again, adjust your legs so that your legs are really reaching back and so the arms are reaching forward. So you should feel nice and long here, laid out on the ground, prone position, belly down. And now start to lift your right arm and left leg up. So stay grounded in that right leg, stay grounded in the left hand. Lift the chest up as well and get longer in that right arm and longer in that left leg. And then slowly lower down and switch sides. Now lifting the left arm up and the right leg up. Stay grounded in that right hand, stay grounded in the left leg and left top of foot, lifting the chest, lengthening the limbs here. And then exhale and release down. And again, lifting the right arm and the left leg. Anchor your tailbone down towards the sticky mat. Lengthen the right arm forward and the left leg back. Extended elbow, extended knee. And lower down. And again, lift the left arm and the right leg up. Reach the left arm forward and the right leg back. Lengthen the limbs. And exhale and come down. Now lay down on your belly for Shalavasana. And one at a time, reach your legs back so that you set yourself up very long on the floor. Take your hands by your hips, forehead down, and then start to lift the shoulders up towards the ceiling. Lift your legs, lift the wrists. Reach your chest forward, reach your legs back. And pull the arms back as you stretch your spine forwards. Anchor your tailbone down. Lift the inner thighs, stretch the knees, open the toes. And lift those outer arms up towards the ceiling. And then exhale, release down, resting your head to one side. And then turn your head and rest the other cheek down on the ground. Release and relax the buttocks. Now lay down on your belly for Shalavasana. And one at a time, reach your legs back so that you set yourself up very long on the floor. Take your hands by your hips, forehead down, and then start to lift the shoulders up towards the ceiling. Lift your legs, lift the wrists. Reach your chest forward, reach your legs back. And pull the arms back as you stretch your spine forwards. Anchor your tailbone down. Lift the inner thighs, stretch the knees, open the toes. And lift those outer arms up towards the ceiling. And then exhale, release down, resting your head to one side. And then turn your head and rest the other cheek down on the ground. Release and relax the buttocks. And now lay down on your back for a pose that I call windshield wiper. Have your knees bent and feet flat, feet pretty wide, wider than the sitting bones. Neutral pelvis, neutral spine. Stretch your arms out to the sides at shoulder height. And then walk your feet even closer to your sitting bones and even wider. And then keeping your feet planted, lower your knees down to the right. And enjoy this gentle twist as the right knee falls more to the right and the left knee falls more to the right. Slide your shoulder blades down your back and lengthen your spine. And feel the position of the pelvis relative to the spine. 
and feel the position of each femur relative to the hip sockets. And then lift your knees back up to the center, feet staying grounded, and lower the knees over to the left side letting the femurs move in the hip sockets. Left knee heavy falling to the left, right knee heavy falling to the left, and enjoy the spinal twist. Get longer in your trunk here as you breathe. And then inhale back to the center and exhale your knees over to the right side. Inhale your knees up to the center and exhale the knees over to the left side. And then inhale back up and continue like this, moving and breathing together. And especially focus on the movement of the heads of the femurs in the hip sockets. Continuing. Let's see if you can go a little deeper into the pose in the next couple of rounds. and then come up to center. And start on your back again here for a simple outer hip stretch. Knees bent and feet flat, starting with a neutral pelvis. And for a moment, take your arms overhead along the floor, lengthen the armpits and the elbows, extend the spine long and take a deep inhalation. Let the pelvis be heavy and relaxed. Be grounded in your feet and then take your arms out to the sides and cross your right ankle over your left knee and let the right knee open out to the right. And then lift the left foot up off the floor, which will bring your whole right leg closer to your chest and then grab onto the back of the left thigh, so grab onto the hamstring close to the knee with both of your hands. So the right hand will go in the hole between the right leg and the left leg. And think of pressing your right knee away from your chest as you bring the right shin bone towards your collarbones. Press the right thigh away from the abdomen and breathe into this sensation here. Pull your left knee and right ankle closer into your chest to deepen the stretch. Still pressing the right thigh and knee away from your chest. And then release and come to center, both feet on the mat, arms out to the sides, and cross the left ankle over the right knee, keeping the left knee open. And then start to take the right knee and left ankle towards the chest as you grab onto the right hamstring with both hands, left arm reaching in the hole between the left thigh and the right thigh and keep pressing the left knee away from you. And that's happening because the femur is turning in the hip socket. So you're finding a deep external rotation in the hip socket in order to stretch the deep hip rotators. And pull the right knee and left ankle closer into your chest. Stay long in your spine here. Don't harden or push the abdomen, but stay long in the lumbar, long in the thoracic spine. Breathing deeply here. Breathing into the sensations, relaxing into the stretch that you feel.
And then release the right foot down and the left foot down. Stretch your arms out to the sides. Relax and lengthen the belly. Rest in neutral. And now we'll practice Supta Padangustasana 4. We'll go part way first and then full way. So have your strap nearby, extend your arms, extend your legs, roll the thighs inwards a little bit, ground the thighs. And then keep that sense of length in your trunk as you lasso the right heel. Extend the right leg all the way up to the ceiling. And extend the left leg along the floor. Long in the low belly, outer right hip moves away from the right waist. You can have a bent right knee here if that's better for you. Long spine. And then grab onto the strap with the left hand only and take your right hand onto the outer right thigh hip area and see if you can pull that outer right thigh and hip area away from the right waist and keep that happening as you extend the right arm out to the right and let the right leg move over to the left just about a foot. So you're starting to cross the leg over towards the left side keeping extended in that right knee, keeping long in the right waist, and then come back to center and we'll switch sides. Now lassoing the left heel, reach the left leg up, again bending the knee if that's better for you, and extend the right leg long, profound internal rotation at the very top of that right thigh to keep the groin relaxed. Long belly, long in the front of the spine, elbows wide, shoulder blades sliding down the back. And then grab onto the strap, very close to the foot with the right hand only. And the left hand will come to the outer left hip and thigh, encouraging that outer left hip to move away from the left waist, staying long in the left waist. And extend your left arm out to the left as you pull the leg over to the right side, just about a foot. Stay open in the backs of the knees. Pulling that leg across the body, but not too much. So the sacrum should stay grounded. Enjoying the stretch in the outer thigh here. And then come back to center. And then release, bending both knees, feet flat. Reach your arms overhead and then stretch both your legs out, internally rotating at the tops of the thighs, lengthening through the arms, stretching the knees and the elbows. Now we'll practice happy baby pose. So be on your back with knees bent and feet flat on the floor. Neutral pelvis, neutral spine. Take a breath here. And then bring your knees into your chest with nice wide knees. So the knees are wider than the rib cage. And then take your arms out to the sides and up and grab onto the outer edges of the feet as you see here. And you can play a little bit in this pose, pulling the right knee down a little bit towards the right armpit and then pulling the left knee down towards the left armpit. You can play with changing the tilt of your pelvis. Make sure that you keep your knees at an angle of about 90 degrees. Don't let your knees close up. So the heels should kick away from the sitting bones. And enjoy this deep fold in the hip creases. Let the lower back relax and release here. Pull those outer feet down and stretch the inner feet up towards the ceiling. Nice long spine, open breath. And then release and let your feet come down to the floor one leg at a time. Stretch your arms overhead along the floor. Get long in your trunk and then release your legs down one at a time so that you're all stretched out here. Straight arms and straight legs. Parallel arms and legs. Roll your thighs in. Lengthen the inner feet forward. Mm -hmm.